you myself and Corey and Claire from downtown. We'll be going to the Warriors Center. Presented in those uniforms, and they are right now just even in their demeanor. You can see them. The people are coming up to them, throwing things at them. They're not defiantly looking at them like they're a bunch of bad you-know-whats. They're looking at them with respect and saying, listen to me. You know what? 10 o'clock is coming. It's time to go home. Even their response right now needs to be applauded. This is an example for other cities to prepare themselves for in case an incident happens in this way. Yeah, they made mistakes. Let's second guess all we want. Right? There was mistakes were made. Yeah, yeah, but they, they got but tonight they but to, they got it together. Tonight they got if you're looking at the right. results, over they, to Devin Shire. They heard from the people again. Uh, not only Help. here in Baltimore but from around the country get this get your acts together and it appears that they did. As you were speaking, Montel, I have two law enforcement experts standing next to me and a sea of shaking heads in agreement with you. First Neil. Yeah, so Two things I want, two points that I want to make. Uh, number one, what Montel said, the true champions of tonight, of the hour, are the citizens. Four four three. And came together yesterday. Nine three eight. Those communities zero 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 five. Neighborhood who came together. The second thing, regarding the police, uh, and, and what they've been able to do, and Montel spoke to this, the difference in their demeanor. I think a significant piece of this is first line supervision. <laughs> those managers out there among the police officers who are giving them instructions, who are telling them, hey, keep the Signal 13, Signal 13, kill it in the Parent Parkway, kill it in the Parkway. At the first line level there in the streets tonight, I'd like to see that going forward as we get through this and get back to some sort of normalcy and that, and that leadership on the streets day in and day out, working with the men and women in the neighborhoods. That's, That's what I want to say. Oh, Don, yeah, please, absolutely. please. I think what we're Don. seeing... So, Don, I'm so sorry. Could I please just yeah, echo yeah, that? Because there are some clips that you had with the police officers behind you that you guys from CNN, you should go back and look at this tonight and pull out some of those pieces that show those police officers, even with people being silly, they were smiling. Their demeanor was entirely different than any confrontation right, I've seen before that. And Mr. Neal is exactly right. I also failed to mention there were some some late there was a couple ladies that were in the street that you saw constantly moving young people around. There were regular members of the community who were jumping in all day yeah, saying, long. What are you doing? Don't do this. Correct. Do this. Breaking up little confrontations. So yeah. you know, again, you know, like I said last yeah. night, I'm gonna say it again. My city stood up. You know, I'm proud to say that I'm from Baltimore. I live in New York now. I'm proud to say I'm from Baltimore. They stood up to the test. Everybody from the Congress, straight, straight on down the mayor's office, the police department. The Tim the Floyd, they were just requesting five citizens, Temple. Even okay. those that are at home You're right now. You're a proud man people. right now. You're a proud man right now. <laughs> I am. Sorry. I'm sorry, Jacob. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Daniel, yeah, we got to do it. Let's do it. We're requesting it for a five shot to come over. Thank you. For all of us, for all of us as Americans. But we have that way, uh because what we're seeing, what we have seen all day long is the community and police come together to prepare for this night of curfew. And that clearly had not happened in the past. If you just look at last night and going back, there had been this separation, but you see people coming um, into call the today. community, yes, clean the streets, work with their police. You see police to the out the nice and clean, and, 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 and you nice saw... And so listen, the yeah. thing is that yeah, you're watching at home. Yeah. And the, even the gang members said right. that. And if you're watching on social media, right, you get if you you get a completely different idea of what's going on. When I said, we, I said to those guys, you guys are being um, credited for better or for worse right. for starting this. They said right. we had nothing to do with that. That was Twitter. That was social media. We didn't do this. We were there standing to get people to stop. They said we don't need to rob stores. If we're right. true member, true gang members, and they were, right. they don't make their money that way. Yeah, that, they make their stuff. money through the drug so, trade. Yeah, the, the, and a completely drug different idea. Of trade what's has going been on. disrupted. Yes, right now. <laughs> but, okay, Montel, thank you. Stand by, guys. We'll continue right. with you, Montel. I want to thank you very much. I appreciate it. We're here in your hometown, and we appreciate you joining us and giving us your perspective of here where you grew up. Uh, and in Don, the meantime, thank we're going to be back with more live from Baltimore. You're quite welcome. Live from Baltimore. We're um, there's not going to be nothing dancing up on the central air. To be getting the you know, upper the hand tonight, they're thing. enforcing a citywide curfew. Home, I want to bring in now CNN's Brian Todd, home, who is out train. in like one of the neighborhoods. He's been watching uh, police so who have formed a line there, trying to get people who are defying the curfew off the streets. Uh, what's going on now, Brian? Charlie, well, we're going on. 
blame the child for that? Don, you mentioned right police trying to get the upper hand. At least in this section of Baltimore, it looks like they have a for the moment. We don't know what the child didn't have a pad. Didn't have a just a moment ago. Didn't have problem with Jason Moore. Didn't have medical care. Didn't have great education. Didn't have any education. This what do we do with those children? Do we abandon them? Well, that's right. Society's Clyde net judgment. Right. 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 Right on there, like maybe a contact number. Police officers here have been preparing for this all day and since last Great. night. And interestingly right enough, Don, just 24 hours ago, I'm going to have our photojournalist Frank swing our camera around here. Just 24 hours ago, right down this block, and you see how clear it is now. Not a soul in sight. 24 hours ago, Don, that that intersection there had a burned out car smoldering in the middle of it. We walked. Wait a minute, let me go. Pull up the address again. 3301 West saw A liquor store being. 3321. I believe it's a car wash. Objects all over the place. It was absolute chaos. No police presence down there. And now look at it. 24 hours later, this street is empty. At least for now, Don. The police do have the upper hand. The Bearcat looked at that crowd and decided that it was corrupt. Uh, critical last night of the police response uh, of the mayor, of the governor, uh, and I think it's important to point out tonight uh, that they are, they're doing a really yeah, good job. And it looks like it's mostly media, but it's just difficult to tell. Tonight they're doing a good job. It, is, it appears to be... Yeah, there's just uh, about 10 of them here. The vision in North, we're coming and coming through. We've got a local field force down here. They're moving. They're moving eastbound north. They have major league history. Tomorrow's game will be closed to the public. Rachel Nichols is here now. She is CNN and Turner Sports anchor uh, for us, and she joins us with more. So, Rachel, tomorrow game is going to play without fans. Explain how significant that is. Yeah, Major League Baseball has nearly a century and a half history, Don, and this is the first time that they will play a game with the doors closed, essentially. Now, it's not going to be played in secret. The game will be televised and heard on the radio, but there will be no game fans in the stands. It's going to be a little bit surreal for those guys, but they just felt that after talking to everybody involved, this was best for the safety of not only the potential fans out there, but the stadium workers. They were already going to have to change the game from a night game to an afternoon game because of the citywide curfew. And you have to remember that last night, they didn't cancel the game until about 45 minutes before the first pitch was supposed to be. So you had this incredibly strange situation where players were getting ready for the game in the clubhouse with the television on, wow. watching yeah. other parts of the city basically in riot and being on fire and feeling incredibly uncomfortable. There were police Girl, in riot here. gear on Babe Ruth Plaza, Six which is the place that the fans come into the game. So it wasn't a situation where the felt was right to be playing baseball. Obviously, things have started to... Um, um, down we'll in they feel like they can have the game tomorrow, but they still didn't feel it was well, safe I have, to have um, a large public gathering like that. So they've not only decided yeah, I have to recall the second the one close tomorrow, they're going to then move the rest of the homestand. They're going to pay, be playing uh, Tampa team down in St. Pete. It was supposed to be a five one seven zero both uh, Maryland war eighteen twelve. Okay, Rachel. Yeah, that war war eighteen twelve. This was the last remnant, and they put up some resistance. They didn't want to leave. They're getting in cars, leaving now, just in case they're the same actors uh, tomorrow night. Really, but for peace today. I don't know if you saw this. Ten four. I copy. Raven Ray Lewis here, retired. Wagon four. We're leaving now. Uh, calling Drew Hill, heading up to my diamond. Baltimore, get off the streets. South two to wagon four. You can ten twenty two. Uh, I believe it's the Northwest wagon showed up. We're good to go. David 10, we need the uh, shop number 9388, the Jeep Liberty Park, on North Avenue, move. We need to pull it up so the can get in. Shop number 9388, if you're driving, can you get to your vehicle, please.
Rachel, he's not the only well, one. You're going to have to tell the athletes really plead with the crowd uh, today. So what did they say? And what, what did you think? Did you think it had any effect? Yeah, uh, Eunice, also, so we about to want to respond to 3321 uh, West Coast Spring Lane for the um, so we we alarm. And check it out. In the 60s and early 70s. And then when you had the Michael Jordan. Well, not saying about the 800 number. In the 80s and 90s. He very specifically distanced himself from social justice and social issue situations. Then we've had phone. this resurgence for the last five me. or ten know. years of athletes taking a more active role. You saw Ray Lewis there, who has been long involved with trying to dis uh, disrupt some of the gang violence in Baltimore. You had Carmelo Anthony. Is anyone who the fourth and eight? There's a local hero there after growing up since the age of eight in Baltimore. No, we taking to Instagram, taking to social media, and begging people, saying, hey, I understand. Trust me, I came from those streets. I understand how you Where feel. Where is that uh, burglary up our community isn't the answer. You see, he said, we all want justice. That's 3321, West Coast Lane. But he pointed out this but, um, is not the right way one? to go about doing this. So he was pleading for people. There are certainly a lot of people um, out there. If you have anybody in the district that is sending, have respond over there. Myself, Katie, and uh, Tanner and Ryan. I'm a big fan of that. I think that athletes have a responsibility to take a leadership role in their communities, and this is examples of that. Yeah, and, and even, thank you very much, even more responsibility to the parents that we're going to speak to coming up. Thank you, Rachel Nichols. A curfew appears to be holding tonight here in the city of Baltimore. The people of this city are trying to take their city back. I want you to take a look at one Baltimore mom. What she did when she saw her uh, son in the middle of the West Coast, Lane, calling the Toya, car Graham, Graham, Toya Graham, a hero. Listen to what she told CBS News. Not even thinking about cameras or anything like 21, that. 33, 21, Lane, the car wash. What's the text for that call? At the end of the day, um, the law company, company called um, the district. Let's talk now about this man. Uh, Vaughn Devon is a teacher at Baltimore Western High School. And 39. Uh, also with me now is Monica Bar Baroska. Uh, Baroka, did I say that right? Baracosa, Baracosa, excuse me, a Baltimore businesswoman and mother of a 12 year old. Kimberly Thompson uh, is with me as well. She's a Baltimore mother of four boys and a fitness instructor. Also is Tamika Addison, another Baltimore mother of four, and they both join me. Monica Baroska, right? Baracosa, Baracosa, Baracosa. Thank you very much. Excuse me for butchering your name. As you guys watch that mom. Sure. Was that Charlie 41 that's going to, um, Way to go, mom. the car wash? Do what you need to do to take care of your kids. Uh, 47, Charlie 49. I'll repeat Charlie 49. So at the end of the day, you need to do what you need to do to take care of your kids. I'd rather me knock his head off to get him to come home than for me to get a call and say they just buried my son. I listen to some people today say it was painful to watch her. It wasn't painful was, to watch um, her. Boy, no. Nobody did. Not a little he was kid. scared. He was, and I was too. Uh, I just believe when you know that you put an investment into your children, you do what you have to do to protect the investment, um, especially when you know um, the day and the time that we live in. It's very important that we really are proactive with our children and that we're... Yeah, we're, we're clear for Northeast, and we're 10 eight on your air. So what about the folks who are saying, oh, well, she was hitting him, and I don't believe in corporal punishment, and... You know, she shouldn't have been doing that. Well, I think, are those folks going to go and parent that child? Are those folks going to be around when that kid comes home from school and has nothing to do and, you know, yeah, he's he's called called jobs and is worried about, you know, the state he's in and where he's spending uh, his Before, I will uh, I think it's very keep that up over calls. I will also keep the Eastern motor in such a tense situation, it's really about making sure your kid doesn't get into more trouble in a worse way. Vaughn, you work with, with the students and with kids who, who are this age. It takes this type of mother to get involved. Do you, do you see that often in school? And we, we want this to continue. Hour, hour now. I'm not just talking about corporal punishment, but I'm just talking about coming to the schools daily, checking on your kids, you know, read their report cards, check their homework. All those things matters, and it has an impact on the students. Together. Not to fight for the police, but to fight for justice for Freddie Gray. I spoke with some of them today. Look at this. Yeah. So all of you are with someone. That they said that there are the Crips out here, the Bloods are out here, uh, the Black Gorilla families out here. You won't tell me your affiliation. Right. Uh, we're not really 
press to tell you guys our affiliation. We just press to put, it, put out the exposure that we together. That's all we're trying to do, we together. We live in a police state where every day we come out, we're being harassed by the police, man. They check boy, boy, Frank, 099 US. Even when you are not doing anything, are you doing something for them to check you? Anybody, oh, this, I'm, I'm saying this. man. Stereotypes. That's why it's not all about the colors right Unit now. Unit specific for 36 commercial on Target and that occurred. 5400 blocks of Todd Avenue. Be on the lookout for a 2015 Subaru rating color XD. It's a bigger systematic problem that we got to deal with. It has front grill damage. There were more than one number one male attack vehicle that happened. When you see the stuff that happened with the looting and the fires or whatever. Anyone come in contact, contact 4 out of 4. No, that's not gang related. Sorry, 4 out of 4. Nothing to do with that. We're the ones out here that's trying to bring peace and stop everything. When you see pictures of like what happened last night, the burning and stuff on television, what do you what do y'all think? It makes us look it makes us look bad, man, because it's not the cause. Disgrace. At the end of the day, what they show on the news and what they show to the media, they show them what they want to see. Too bad, can't let them see what's really going on between us. The what's unity. really going on? Unity. The unity between all of these rivals that wouldn't even be together right, um, right now. Kids were the ones who acted out in that man. 24, what do you want to are, are going off because they have no recreational parks. And they, they angry. Have, you can't keep on poking somebody in the back and think they're not going to turn around and swing. Like, we at our boiling point. And we survivors in Baltimore because that's what they made us by the way that they treated us. When was the last time has there ever been a truce like this called between all the colors? Never. Oh, no. Never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. So it was said that all of the people who that, that it all started because gang members said we're gonna we're gonna riot, we're gonna loot, we're gonna that was, that was said by social media, that was said by the commission. You think that was social media doing it? Yeah, yeah, who else yeah. they going to blame yeah. on when they can't control it? Exception at one team is going to say they will come in later tomorrow. You're clear to start keep hoping once 800 come with you. So like, where's though we gonna look good? We ain't gonna go. Thirty five or four, that's four. Like, where's though? Yeah, like, why destroy the community where I lived at? Though exactly. my whole life, you heard exactly. me. We not out here trying to say that we're saints. That we all just the most innocent people in the world. We trying to say that we're making effective changes in our community, or at least trying. It started with Fred. One one nine nine seven. Take it to the next level. One one nine nine seven. It's not just Baltimore. This is affecting the whole country right now. Your cat four five four two. Four, five, four, two. I want to tell our viewers first, thank, you, uh, thank them for that. We're going to speak to these guys in just a minute. We're awaiting a press conference from Baltimore police. Yeah, so how many, you, how many people all together? Um, Three. And, and how many? And, 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 and the dog. Oh, and the dog is from a B, uh, a South African to, um, Mastiff. And she's got an attitude. Uh, listen, my dogs would bark and then they'd run away. So I, 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 I give the dog a lot of credit. How close is your restaurant to where the violence took place and where the burning took place and the looting took place well the building like the main problems were quite a ways away but well, uh, those are ten fact, the, or next to me, uh, the poor gentleman that's owned that building it's a music store for 40 years if you can uh, get them up there with 800 in fact he was injured and then whatever shift they're on uh, he'll, he'll, he'll let you know if they're going to demobilize those guys they need to see 800 on the instrument of one kind or another right yeah 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 right, so you wait, wait so you're right there, there. you're you were there as your neighbor's store was being looted and robbed well at that point we would have tried to intervene had we been outside but by that point it had grown dark and i'd gone inside right and uh was inside with the lights off in case someone broke in i was going to introduce them you know i'd make introductions for them right. myself the dog and then the lord Introduce them. <laughs> You're going to send them back home. Is that is that was your mission? I was going to make the introduction. Did they you know, know you? Did the looters know you were in there? Is that why they didn't go into your place? I can only say that the the me and my brother standing outside all day. I guess that if anybody had seen us, they must have known not to come in. Well, because they they didn't they they avoided us. What a sad thing though to see the police of Baltimore in retreat like you did last night. What what are your thoughts about that? My uh, uh, my guess is that they were told to stand down. And then of course we have the comments of your brilliant mayor in that city saying, "Oh, we want to give them time to destroy, you know, areas and and let them vent." What is your reaction to that? I'm going to tell you what. I saw at 2 o'clock 
first of all, the police in Baltimore are awesome. We've got a great force. They're great guys, and they were trying to do a job. Their command failed them. The mayor failed them. They reacted very poorly because of that. And when I saw their line being breached at 2 o'clock, I sent all my employees home and told the other people not to come in because I couldn't guarantee their safety. And if the police couldn't guarantee their own safety, I couldn't put my employees, my kids are like my family. I couldn't put them in the line of fire. You know, you're a man um, after my own heart. It was a very sad moment. It's a very sad you. moment. Um, I think I'm a lot like you, and I'd like to think I would have done the exact same thing that you did. And uh, I'm glad you stood up for yourself. I'm glad you protected your place of business. I only wish, I, I am convinced, I agree with you, I'm convinced the police were told to stand down. Because I've never seen police back off the way they did yesterday after rocks and boulders being thrown at them and their cars being burned and, and all the else that was breaking out uh, same yesterday. Same, same, uh, Sir, uh, thank you. Appreciate your yeah. time, and I'm, I'm glad your business is uh, still up and running. A massive From celebration the today. Area. A hope you can went meet viral the, uh, today. Uh, Pinty Pinty and went Noel. viral today. Cooperation went viral today, whereas I violence went there. viral I last night. And so I think you've got to give, if you're going to criticize the mayor, uh, uh, for yesterday, yeah. you've got to give the mayor and police a lot of credit for today. Yeah, um, Mark Lamont Hill, uh, rightfully yeah, so, I'm, I, uh, Van is right. Yeah, I, I don't I, want to be overconfident, I, I, right? I'm never overconfident when it comes to state power, uh, but I am confident in, in the people and what I've seen. And I think Van is right. I mean, I think the mayor did a much better job today uh, than than she was given credit for yesterday. I think some of the some of the critique that should have gone across the board only went to her. She became a convenient target. So me, the more interesting thing is what the people did and Van began to talk about, that, right? Is, Community yeah, members were active. Uh, organizers were active. Activists were active. Van, we've got to, uh, Mark, we've got to get to the press conference. Our first night with okay. a curfew, uh, with uh, the help of uh, many agencies, state police, the National Guard, uh, we have deployed uh, throughout the city as a whole. Uh, no major events earlier in the, in the evening. We had a group uh, march down into the downtown area to City Hall. We had no major issues with that. We had a small group within that group of about 44 people <laughs> that we stopped and had a conversation with, but allowed them to proceed on. Uh, that group had no issues. Very proud of them. They came down, did the First Amendment rights, and went back and returned to the area that they had come from. Uh, you saw the activity that took place at uh, Pennsylvania in North. Oh, very, um, very, very pleased with the community city. and the citizens and the Lower residents city. there, voicing themselves. Eight, there, was music, ten. there was dance. Greenbelt is a left. Total of 11. What is another chance for the Greenbelt? It was a very good uh, event for the day. Uh, Congressman Elijah yeah, Cummings uh, was out there. You need transport for Green Valley. Uh, was talking to the crowd. A lot of uh, the men, 300 men, they were all uh, uh, talking to the crowd, making sure that they're quiet. Uh, the mayor was at uh, different places throughout the city today, making sure that she was seen and having a number of different meetings with community people. Um, just a background after the events today, we've had uh, one, or correction, two arrests for looting in the central district. Yep. We've had uh, one arrest for disorderly con conduct in the eastern district. Uh, also, we had uh, one officer uh, had a drive-by brandishing of a weapon in the same eastern, eastern district within the last 30 minutes. Uh, in the western dif district, where uh, that's north of Pennsylvania, in that area, we've had about approximately seven arrests. In totality in the city, after our curfew went up, we've had about uh, 10 total arrests. I get reports from uh, the organization that we do not have a lot of activity or movement throughout the city as a whole, so the curfew is, in fact, working as the mayor had called. Um, one of the interesting things today that I just kind of uh, happened to buy and we'll answer any questions is that as I exited the building uh, to go to the meeting today, I had pretty close to about 12 to 15 young adults uh, waiting in line to become police officers at the Baltimore Police Department. In light of uh, the activities and issues, I asked them, are you still uh, willing and able and wanting? They were very much enthusiastic and excited about being, becoming members of the Baltimore Police Department, which says a lot. Uh, again, tonight, I think the biggest thing is that uh, citizens are safe. Uh, the city is stable. All right, uh, we 80, to, uh, 800 to 8470. Uh, we are going if to pass the flash away as you can retreat street and go back to the two to three block radius. I'm right there. If you want to keep facing down retreat, the other one's facing down North city. Avenue. Is there any, uh, and any other one can come inside of the skirmish. We'll redeploy them on this side. Uh, 
I don't have information on that. We were taking rocks uh, earlier in the Southern District. We had a, uh, a young uh, leader out there who did a very good job of responding in a very peaceful way. They ended up uh, arresting, I believe it was what I was told, about three to four uh, juveniles who were down in that area. So I don't know about the injured officers, but we'll follow up with you. I advise everybody on LFA that they are now switching to the same workable bonding channel. They're there for various uh, so I'm to give you feedback on it. Without my glasses, uh, in the Central District, we had uh, two for looting. Uh, in the Eastern District, uh, one disorderly conduct. And then uh, in the Western District, uh, 800 we had, uh, is still on the, the scene. vast majority of forfeiture violations. That was seven. Can you move as quick as possible? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Cleared out around Pennsylvania. There was about a dozen protesters and uh, uh, press that were there. And then the line of police shot Uh We, uh, as the, the skirmish line, uh, they were taking rocks and glass that were coming in. Uh, they were trying to put the crowd away and out. Uh, apparently, it worked. Uh, firing the pepper uh, transportation supervisor uh, to, to smoke, um, uh, with the wind BPD van 2 also and us BPD at the same van time. 3. So we had to hold and let the smoke clear, and they were, like I said, taking rocks and pellets. They were trying to push uh, uh, people further. They also used uh, the armored cars to, uh, to go out and push uh, the particip participants off of the street. We had the address of the Mondama Memorial. We'll have another briefing uh, tomorrow between 12 and 1. For the next couple of hours, we'll continue to get that over our social media accounts. Anybody that has any questions, you can send them to our news BPD address, and uh, we'll keep you updated in the morning. Thank you. Transportation supervisors to uh, Van 2 and 3, can y'all respond up to Pissing right, Door uh, and uh, bring back up, uh, uh, Greensville and, and um, MSP uh, police and uh, uh, bring them back to downtown. Were arrested, uh, for curfew violations. Hey, Rizzo, uh, you just sent us up to Mount Downman Mall. I can set up Van 4. Up there. Uh, to discuss when we just have a, a, a moment left here, guys. Uh, that's pretty good considering I, the level of violence that happened last night. Mark, I cut you off. Go ahead. This is Brandon. Yeah, I just got with you. Just sent me up to uh, my Diamond Mall to pick up uh, a police a platoon up there. So I got Van 2 and Van 3 heading up there right now. So I've got Van 4 sitting at headquarters. I can send them up to send you north if you want. But you had the Nation of Islam again. You had gang members in the All right, so far, I'm sending Van. Um, Seven up to get it. Yeah, I've got to run, guys. But well, I'm on Diamond Line also. I appreciate it. I'm sure you were going to, uh, you know, yeah, ten four. You told me you, you were sending a van up there, and, and you Hill. needed two more. So it's myself and uh, Van Two heading up to Mount Diamond. And I've got Van Four sitting uh, right there on Fayette. I can give him a call and send him up to Pennsylvania uh, North. I don't know if he'll need another one or not. Symptoms was all I was doing. So when I finally told my doctor, he said she hey, was only need one van to go up to on Mon Domus. But still and that other van go down to Fenton North. To severe Crohn's disease. And that in clinical studies, the majority of patients. Yeah, 10 4. I'm sorry. I thought you said you needed two, two, two additional vans going up there. All right, no problem. I'll send uh, van 2 and van 4 up to Fenton North, all right? Serious, sometimes fatal infections right, and cancers. Yeah, I only need um, one additional van. As have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions. Van 4, we copy. Before treatment, get tested for TV. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections well, so are common. Well, you go up to um, hepatitis B are prone to infections or have fewer symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. If you're still just yeah, ten four. You need another van over at Penn North, correct? I'm gonna send van two up there and van four, and then myself and van seven are going to the top. Touch the stuff. It's evil. Ten four. Yep. They have all those warnings yeah, on them. Might as well people. say, you're going to die, Jeff. You hired someone to clean the gutters. Not just someone, someone from Angie's List. But we're not members. We don't have to be to use their new SnapFix feature. Angie's List helped me find a highly rated service provider to do the work at a fair price. <laughs> <laughs> Come see what the new Angie's List can do for you. The situation. What do you bring think about into justice? What do you think about your mayor that said we've got to give these people room to destroy? 
Yeah, I mean, I know that the media has constantly focused on that. I'm not going to necessarily, you know, comment on my mayor and her soundbite. You don't, you don't want to comment on your mayor's irresponsible comment? Why don't you say that that was irresponsible of her because it clearly was? Because right now, Sean, throughout the city of Baltimore, we were on fire. Tonight, we're trying to get the city under control. And that's me as a, as a responsible council person. That's what I need to focus on, right. the, the residents, my constituents in the 7th District. All right. We appreciate your time, and we wish your city the best. And coming up, more of our breaking news so much, coverage Sean. out of Baltimore.